What is going on, guys? It is Brett. I am here with another review for the show Reacher Season 2. This is for Episode 5, entitled Burial. Uh, you will notice that I am a little bit behind schedule right now with everything going on at the holidays. When I tuned back in to review the next episode, I realized I was there to review Episode 6, and I had missed Episode 5, but I am going to give separate reviews for both of these episodes because, let's face it, I think that Reacher Season 2 is so good right now that I think it deserves to get separate reviews for all of them. I'm really glad that, uh, like, I had some concerns in the previous episode. I felt like Reacher was getting pushed into the background a little bit, but that is not a problem in this episode, which I really, really like. Uh, there will be some spoilers here, guys, so forewarned is forearmed. I'm gonna try to get into a couple of specific scenes and explain why I liked them so much. So there'll be a, a couple details that you might not be fond of hearing if you haven't yet watched the show. So just be warned. All right, so in this episode, it's entitled Burial, and we have the continuation of the case with the, the now stolen missiles. Obviously, this whole overarching conspiracy with this company and this head of security, that's a really big part of this. And you get a lot of really great character interaction. I saw somebody categorize this episode as filler, but what I think I liked about it so much was the character interactions felt like they were informing the story as it goes. Now, that's because I'm waiting. You know, we've got three more episodes to go, so I think that they did some great character development in this episode, or at least I felt they asked the right questions. So the first thing you get when the show starts is O'Donnell is sending his wife and his kids away for their own safety. Obviously, this mission that they are on has proven to be extremely dangerous, and he wants to keep them safe. And you get to see Reacher, who's there with him, make some interesting observations about first the woman in whom O'Donnell has chosen to marry, but then also he's back to making these similar observations that he's made before about how he perceives O'Donnell now as to who he thought he was when they were in the military together. I do believe that this is an important plot point and that it's going to play a role later. Like I said early on, I find the O'Donnell character to be just just a tad bit suspicious, which I like. I think they've done a great job of, of building the character in that way, given that he's not the main character. He's just got a tinge of suspicion with how he goes about, you know, when he was pushing for uh, his calls to the sen about the senator and then also talking about Franz and Swan. He's just a little bit suspicious, and I, I really, really enjoyed that. Plus, it puts Reacher back front and center to have this conversation, and I really needed Reacher to be the main character again because I felt like he was getting pushed into the backdrop in the previous episodes. So from there, we get the the missiles are stolen by Oleg, who, by the way, this actor, I, I can't pronounce his name. I believe it's pronounced Steve Bayek, but I, you know, if I'm wrong, sue me. I apologize. But this guy has a great look. He has this great, you know, villain look, and I really, really like this actor. It's, it's a shame that he's playing a henchman in this episode. I've seen that actor in other things, but it's a shame that he's playing a henchman in this episode because I'd like to see more of him in the character of A.M., because I think they're doing a great job of kind of embodying different types of, uh, you know, villains in, in a series like this. So I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. Again, most people might not even notice it because he doesn't even have a whole ton of dialogue. But when you've got a great look, I always, I always, uh, I always catch it. It's always something that speaks to me. So what happens is, is they, they hijack this truck with the missiles that Reacher and his team are trying to get to. And Dixon and Neely find out where it's going. They kind of work their way into this company and then, you know, with the clipboard. And then they go after the missiles, but unfortunately they're too late. They get into a gunfight with these guys and they end up killing two of the bad guys. And then um, the character of Oleg gets off with them, you know, gets off, gets out of there with the missiles. Uh, and then... Uh, Dixon and Neely have to essentially burn the car that they're in to destroy evidence to get out of there. And they have another conversation with Reacher, uh, who then has to go and interact with the, if you remember earlier in the season, a couple episodes ago, it might have been two episodes ago, where he... Uh, gets information out of like a senator's policy aide or policy d director about what this whole project was to begin with and he has a whole interaction with him so they talk to Reacher right before this happens you also find out more uh, about AM which I really really liked okay so these are one of the two big scenes that I'm going to talk about. There's there's things that I like about this show that they're addressing when it comes to the bad guys and the people that are just side characters, which is characters that are shades of gray and characters that are generic evil. And what I really, really love is the character of AM, the, the character of Mahmood, is this great generic evil that feels representative of villains past. Uh, when, when Reacher and O'Donnell are talking to the his brother's former contacts in the government they essentially say look we don't have any photos of the guy we've got a couple of crappy audio recordings 
And he's not loyal to a political party. He's not loyal to a country. His only God is money. Now, I love that. I think that that speaks back to this time where what I call it the great unifier when it comes to bad guys in movies, right? Like everybody can pick a side when it comes to villains that are portrayed as with political agendas, right? Because everyone's got their own version of politics. So it might feel like you're being spoken down to if they make this generic villain loyal to a political movement. And I think that a lot of people have felt that in the last couple of decades with how politicized Hollywood has gotten. But back in the early 2000s and the 2010s, there was this great influx of the concept of just that generically evil bad guy who's not loyal to a state, he's not loyal to a party, all he's loyal to is himself and his self-interest. And I think that that makes for a great way to bring your audience in because it's a universal, it's kind of a universal ideal, right? Like everyone can get behind the idea of the person who will do they can get behind the idea of going after the person who will do absolutely anything, who will do unspeakable things in service of their own agenda, right? And I, I love that. I, I love that portrayal in this. I love the way they describe the character. It made me think a bit about the Brosnan Bond movies where in the first movie you have Alec Trevelyan whose parents were Leanne's Cossacks and they were betrayed by the British government and he is taken in by the British government who believes that he just wasn't old enough to remember but it's in it, it, as politicized as that idea is as we know it comes back to betrayal right it comes back to the idea of wanting revenge which turns a person mad and it, in it, furthermore, in the show, it really becomes more about him and Bond and, you know, what happened at that uh, weapons plant when Bond changes the, the timers on the, on the bombs from six minutes to three. So it's, it's grounded in a personal motive, but it still has a, a little bit of, of politics woven into the ideology behind what made him do his things. But then you go to, like, the second movie where it's Jonathan Carver, who's just the generically evil businessman, evil media mogul, which, as we know, became even more... <laughs> became even more prevalent in later years, you know, the idea of the evil media mogul. And then in the third movie, you get, you have, you literally have a, just an anarchist. And I love that. And I, I love that progression there. I think that people can get behind those types of cartoonish villains, but the motives themselves, you know, at least in the first movie, was very, very personal. And it's just, it, it got me thinking about it. I don't even know how much it really connects to the story, but it got me thinking about how difficult it is these days to do a really, really good villain. And it ties in a little bit to the next scene, which is a different type of character, which is someone who's not coded as neither, either necessarily, at least not yet, who is not coded as either necessarily a good guy or a bad guy. They're a self-interested party and somebody that the, the protagonist is willing to work with, and that's the character of Lavoie, Senator Lavoie, who essentially, you know, has Reacher picked up and takes him into a, it's like a zoo, someplace where they can't be recorded, can't be filmed, and says, look, I want you to do what I found out you did in Margrave to all of the people involved in this case. And what he's doing is he's appealing to Reacher's self-interest. Reacher wants to hurt the people who killed his friends. So this politician who got caught with his hand in the cookie jar wants to appeal to Reacher's self-interest so that he can keep his hands clean from everything that happened. And there's a, a great bit there, and a lot in the way that they had with the same person that he works with, that policy director, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, where they talk about the gray sides of politics, right? Like, you know, uh, love it or hate it, whine or cry, this is how things get done in Washington, D.C. And I think that's very honest to how things actually are in politics, certainly not how they're portrayed by the actual politicians themselves or the partisan people who want to believe that one side is good or evil. You know, it doesn't matter the party. Uh, what I've always thought of with politics is it's perhaps the tiniest, minuscule, amount of patriotism and a whole lot of self-interest. And I feel like that's very much true for most of the political structure, especially here in America. And he's appealing to his self-interest and Reacher understands that. And they choose to, in a way, work together because Reacher is then sent after these guys that they're going to find. And from that scene, we move on and we're at, we're now at Franz's funeral. And a lot of stuff happens in this one when you actually think about it, because uh, the first thing you see is 
Reacher, O'Donnell, Dixon, and Neely, they're standing around. They're waiting for the funeral to start. And they get their good scene where everybody breaks down how they feel like this case is going to play out. They, they dissect what has been done for this crime so far with the missiles, with the theft, with all of this stuff. They break it down. And then they break down how they think that it will play out in the future. And it's another opportunity for the show to do one of the things that it does really, really well, which is elevate the intelligence of all of its characters, which is really, really important. I think making competent characters is a very very important thing to getting an audience to care about the story that's being told and I think that they did that really really well also we start to see that Reacher I think this is where it really kicked into me that Reacher really was the main character in this episode once again because he's heavily featured in this discussion and then he has an interaction with Russo with Guy Russo who shows up and he gives if you remember earlier in the season he when he arrests Reacher and O'Donnell and puts him in the back of the car there's like toys and in the back seat and they take jabs at him and want to know what the, those are for well he gives those toys to Franz's son and he has this great interaction with the son where he basically says like I understand what you're going through and you get you get woven in his backstory which is that he lost his father at a young age so he feels for this child and then Reacher gets is kind of has his hackles up and he talks to him after he says why are you doing that are you just trying to get in nice with the mom? And he's essentially accusing him of being kind of a scumbag. And you get this great, a bit of like a, a monologue from, from Russo where he explains, no, my father, my father died at a young age. I waited for months upon months for my father to come home knowing that he never would. In this case, it's because his father was never was never willing to take the money that dirty cops offered him or that politicians offered him and they killed him for it which is why he took it so personally every time reacher would take those jabs in previous episodes about him perhaps being bent or being a dirty cop he found it very very upsetting and now you know why and here is where an actor like dominic lombardozzi shines because there's this great um uh, mano a mano, hyper masculine, back and forth between these two. That's just, it's done really, really well. It feels like you don't get a lot of characters like that in cinema these days. So to get to see these two guys stand there on, you know, <clears throat> toe to toe, talking about their principles and what they believe in, I felt was fantastic writing. Again, I, uh, people would label this episode as filler, but the information they gave you is so important to character motivations that I, I wouldn't really give it that description. I wouldn't. So I really, really enjoyed that. And from there, the funeral began begins and you get a shootout with two bad guys and uh, a, a shootout ensues between the team and then these guys I would say that this is where the show it doesn't have the great like it doesn't do the greatest action scenes like it, it's carried in a lot of ways like when it's fighting when it's one-on-one -on -one, and you get to see the size of Alan Richson like that's good right it, it speaks to the to the tone and the character but it's like as a directorially I, I just don't know if they're necessarily the most riveting of action sequences but then you get a car chase and they they stop one of these guys and they basically turn him and say like you gotta come and do something for us and they find out from him that apparently the person who sent him to do this was a guy named Swan now this is a, a through line that was very important throughout the episode one of the one of the talking points that has been repeatedly discussed over the last several episodes is that whether Swan is guilty or innocent. And there was a scene earlier, a flashback earlier in the episode that helps flesh out all of the motives for these people, especially for Reacher. So in this flashback, Reacher and Swan are on a drug buy uh, as for, per their work in the military police. And the, the buy goes bust and eventually they get into a firefight with these drug dealers and Swan takes a bullet for Reacher. Now that helps inform you, the audience, us, the audience, why it is that Reacher has been so unbelievably reticent to take up the idea that Swan could be guilty of such heinous crimes. He had his life saved by this man and it informs a lot of what we're seeing and I really really like that it's like they haven't overused the flat uh, the flashbacks they've used them sparingly they don't have them every 10 minutes which disrupts the flow of the story I was thinking back to shows like Arrow which had a lot of flashbacks but always managed to make it fit well into the story like when you do a lot of flashbacks it runs the risk of not doing that and being very very much uh, you know putting the brakes on what you're watching so I've been really really glad with the minimal amount of flashbacks they've done so just as they send this guy 
guy into this warehouse to try and get proof that it's Swan that's in there. You know, he is talking to Neely and he says, she says, what are you going to do if it actually is Swan in that warehouse? What, what are you going to do? And Reacher, he kind of, he has an answer, but he doesn't necessarily have the best answer. And I think it speaks to just how conflicted he is about everything that's going on here. And right as that happens, the warehouse goes up in flames. So you get a, uh, you get a, a really good cliffhanger as we go into the next episode. I do think that this is very important. I think the fact that even into episode five, we haven't seen Swan yet. Uh, I'm starting to really, really believe more and more that one of the main characters, again, and remember, I've mentioned this in previous reviews, I haven't read the books, so I don't know if there is a double cross coming. Even if there is in the books, it's completely plausible that they change the character that does the double cross in the television show just to keep it fresh. They're always willing to do that. So I don't know if we're going to end up with O'Donnell being a bad guy. I certainly find his character shifty enough. Um, I just felt like all the actors did fantastic work. It was really, really good to see the character of Reacher play front and, you know, be front and center again in this episode. So I think they're back on the right track. So I'm really, really looking forward to episode six, which I'm about to start reviewing like right after I watch. I'm going to go, I came upstairs right after I finished watching it, did this review. Now I'm going to go and watch episode six and I'll be out, I'll be able to have that one out for you guys soon. Let me know below in the comments, what have you thought of the show so far? Have you enjoyed the amount that Reacher has been in it? Because that was certainly one of my small critiques earlier on. Do you think it's living up to season one? Do you think it's above season one? Let me know down below what you think and we'll be back with another episode review for Reacher soon. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.